Komodo is just a, an ordinary Australian that wants to go out and do not so ordinary things. One push up, help. It's pretty daunting rocking up on day one, not knowing anything. Three, 56, keep going. The Komodo attributes are adaptability, resolve, self-discipline, toughness, trainability, teamwork, and judgment. Well, I say it a lot to the candidates when they first get on selection. This is probably the biggest game of recovery of their life. The key objectives of the selection process are to find individuals who are going to be successful commando operators in Australia and overseas. The trainers are an essential component. They are the forge for which we hammer out our new trainees. You know, I'm either going to pass and get into the unit or they're going to scrape me off the pavement trying. Uh, Commando is an Australian who has decided to serve his country and to put himself in life or death situations for the good of Australia. They need to be humble and they need to be adaptive because the fact is that the threat and the environment are constantly changing and therefore we need our commandos to be able to operate across a broad spectrum. Having successfully completed the Special Forces entry test, a small group of military candidates are now undertaking one of the toughest courses in the Australian Defence Force. Well, I guess it's something I've thought about doing for, for quite a long time. I sort of came to the understanding that um, Special Forces was the pinnacle within the military. And I, uh, I feel that if I was going to join an organisation, whether it was the military or otherwise, I'd want to be surrounded by um, very like-minded, motivated individuals. You know, I think a lot, of, a lot of people take it for granted what we have here. And I think, you know, everything that we have, the freedom, the ability to do whatever we want, you know, when we want to, and it's a, it's a special place. And um, I think I just don't want to take it for granted. I think every, every person should, should put something back into, in, into this country and, and for other people here. So, you know, I've, that's why I guess I'm here as well. In a bid to be admitted into the Brotherhood of Australian Commandos, they are pitting their bodies against the training requirements and the demands of highly discerning instructors. So my job is the SFTC, uh, Special Force Training Centre, physical training instructor. And uh, inside that, my job is to physically assess and train the candidates on the selection and reinforcement side. Um, but I certainly bring out the physical and, and sometimes mental uh, shortfalls of candidates. After four initial days of intense activity and challenges, the gruelling commando selection course has reached its most difficult period. Demarcation. The 
uh, the hardest part of the selection course is the last uh, 72 hours of the course where candidates are put through the ringer. They're given a series of challenges, often with little food, little uh, sleep, and they're required to give their all, uh, or else they'll uh, be found uh, unsuitable. Demarcation, it's a constant battle of, uh, of the assessors assessing you without any sleep, without any food, uh, only having water for sort of three, three and a half days, and to see how, how mentally you get through it. After an intense 24 hours of physically exhausting training, it is now day two of the demarcation process. Hey, question. Predictably, the strain has begun to show. We told them that they've only got a couple minutes of the session left. You can start to see them physically relax. So now we'll get them out of the water and, and tell them to start uh, getting ready for the next activity. Then all of a sudden we'll change our mind and tell them to get back into the, into the water just to see who's got that ability to adapt and those with the tough the toughness and the strength of character to get back in as if the, uh, the session never happened. This is a, just a simple psychological test to see who's got resolve and who doesn't. It's the time on selection that we lose the most candidates. It's at a high intensity. It's survivable, but it's harder than most of the, of the guys would have trained. Not just the physical aspect, but the mental aspect of do I really want to be here is probably the hardest thing on the course. Um, and then it, it, it only gets harder. These men are hurting. They've been operating close to their limits for the first four days of the selection course. They've done more than eight hours of physical assessments, a 20 kilometre pack march, and three days of cross country navigational assessments by day and night. All this with a little less than 12 hours sleep since the selection course began. The selection process, yeah, it's, it's definitely not easy. It's, they put you in stressful situations to see how you're going to react. You, you know that when you're going, you know, you don't know what's going to happen, but you know that they're going to be testing you, so you prepare yourself. If physically you get, they, they just wear you right down, so they, so you're at, you're at your worst, and so you, they want to see how you're behaving at your worst and how you, how you cope with situations then. Oh, right. They now find themselves treading water in a gruelling physical assessment. This session will test their resolve while minimising the wear and tear on their aching bodies. There's a number of pool sessions or swim sessions that are designed to, to see if guys have what it takes to do something harder but also outside their comfort zone, so in a different environment. When they're completely fatigued, will, they, will their anxiety levels be very high in the pool? And if so, can we accept that or can we retrain that individual? Um, if not, then he needs to be removed. We use water drills during selection for two reasons. One is to get guys comfortable operating in, in the water environment. We are an amphibious unit. The second one is the heat. If it's too hot, we can't train the guys to their full extent, so we can throw them in the pool and, and still test them and assess their attributes in a, in a pool environment. Are there any questions? The candidates are released, but not for rest. They're now required to collect their gear and move off to the next task. So during the selection process, we, we are looking for individuals that will display all of those attributes. And it's, it's only those individuals displaying all of those attributes uh, that we then know, or we expect, will be able to learn all the skills that we, we will give them during the next stage. So uh, we, we're looking for someone who has that um, base level, those base level attributes, and then um, we've broken them down. We've discovered who they are as, uh, they really are as a person. And then we'll start to give them the skills that we need them to have to operate in our environment. It is day five of the selection course and only the beginning of the demarcation activity. The main group of candidates have been broken into smaller groups so the instructors can begin to see how they work together as a small team. 
These candidates have been awake for 48 hours. They all know that you're tired, they've all been through it themselves, but how you deal with it and how you sort of approach each different stand, whether it be a, an attack or if we're stripping AK-47s, and it's about how you physically and mentally attacked that stand and how you kept going in the end. I said the only way to cock this weapon is to have the safety on, put the weapons on the ground. They're uh, being trained and assessed on their ability to learn a foreign weapon. It's expected that a commando, whether he's working overseas with other forces, that he can quickly adapt and learn new weapon systems. This is just another, another test to see who's got that adaptability to be able to uh, pick up those skills and then replicate them straight away. Position ready. Demarcation is a test of willpower. The physicality of the men has already been established as sufficient enough to enter the course. It'll be further developed during the commando reinforcement cycle training that follows selection. 88, that was, come on, what are you doing, 88? 119, you're Right now, it's the mental determination of candidates that instructors are keen to expose. We're, we're not really uh, putting the candidates through a session that's going to make them fitter and stronger. We're more aimed at testing the candidate, uh, testing um, his mental toughness, his resolve, and all, all, all attributes concerned. Oh and pretty much going to fatigue uh, and to see who fatigues first uh, and to assess candidates that way. Don't be last this time, 79. Here's your chance. Any session will be hard when you're asked to do it backed up after another session. So uh, PT is basically a pre-fatiguing event on selection um, to see how well candidates can cope um, and learn when they're fatigued. These men have been given an unusual and challenging task. The scenario is designed to test their ability to solve problems while physically and mentally fatigued. In this scenario, the candidates are required to remove items from a contaminated area into a clean area. This replicates an operational task where commandos may be required to enter a contaminated area with gas masks and clear it. So they're in gas masks at the moment. It, it fits the scenario, but also what it does is it makes the tasks so much harder because the masks, they don't have a proper seal and their eyes will be fogging up. They won't be able to see, they won't be able to breathe, and it's hard for them to get the oxygen they need at the stage, particularly with the activities they're doing. They're so tired, they're worn out, it's tough. We're yelling at them, they can't hear. The candidates are required to provide each other with clear instructions in order to complete the task. So, you know, someone's just giving him instructions and he's taken off, no one heard him. To have a gas mask on and do any task feels like um, so someone's covering up your, your mouth and your nose with tape. It feels like somebody's constricting you. It's hard to breathe, especially when your heart rate's elevated and you're really trying to suck in, suck in some deep breaths and you just can't, you can't at all. So it's, it's almost a feeling of suffocation when, when you get really towards the end of it. And you're just trying to, trying to suck in as much oxygen as you can, but it won't let you. It, it comes down to the attributes again. For example, um, adaptability. Is he able to, um, you know, he can't do something one way. Is he able to think under fatigue and, and uh, mental stress to be able to do it a different way um, and, and still achieve the aim? Uh, commando operator needs to be adaptable because uh, they need to be able to solve complex problems in stressful situations. They, they need to be able to deal with a lot of information coming in from different sources, be able to sort through all that information and make the best decision possible in the, in the time they have available and, and cope with varying situations. They need to be go, able to go from a combat situation to negotiating peacefully and calmly with elders. the guys have shown at this stage and the rest of them will be thinking is it worth it what we're looking for now is that guy no matter what he happens he's going to keep going so later on 
if we're on operations, he's going to be reliable and dependable. I'm going to be relying on him. He's going to be relying on me. We need to make sure that these guys are up to that challenge and for his own sake, that he's the person that we really want. So it doesn't matter how tired you are and how much physical training that you've done. It doesn't matter how much you prepare yourself. All you really have to do is just keep going. Don't stop, don't give up. On a normal day, the scenario is not an overly difficult task for a soldier to complete, but the instructors are not looking to test the candidates in average conditions. The stakes are made higher by restricting their vision and breathing with gas masks. This is important as it assesses a candidate's ability to operate outside of their normal training environment. Gas mask off. Demarcation is not designed to be simple. The challenges are both rigorous and relentless, but the reward for the candidate is admission into the Australian commandos. It's something that comes with you know, being in the military that it doesn't matter if, if they're American or British or whatever, but if you're there hurt, you know, you know that people are just going to be risking themselves to help you. And you're never going to get that in any other job. It's an honour to be part of that culture. But once you're in the unit and in the community, I think it's the confidence then that builds within yourself and within your team that, that starts to take over. And then you link to that idea, this sense of belonging, and you put that idea of confidence and your commitment to your mates or your team together. And it can be an incredibly potent effect and outcome that you can achieve. Yes, yes, yes! As the candidates push through the merciless nightmare of demarcation, the hours begin to feel more like weeks. Every minute that passes demands more than the one before it. But each of them is determined not to let this last phase of selection break them. Too much has been sacrificed already to simply give up and walk away. I sacrificed um, potentially at least initially two years without my kids. And that's, that's, a, that's about as big a sacrifice as I can make, um, as well as away from my wife. So, you know, for us it's a family effort. It's not just me being here, so there's a lot bigger picture going on behind my scene that um, it's going to drive me out of bed every morning, no matter what. Uh, I think I've sacrificed to be here my, my family time. Uh, I've got a daughter um, who's just over one and a half years old, and you miss a lot of, you know, you miss a lot of things. Um, I see them as much as I can, you know, and on weekends and that sort of thing, but you miss a lot of family time. When you get, get to me. So, um, you know, you, if you put a fair bit on the line to come here and do this, um, there's a lot more riding on it, therefore uh, each minute of the day is spent with a fair bit of purpose. What are we going to do? Communicate. Yeah, remember the success of this activity is communication and teamwork. On your feet, man, up! Unfortunately, the reality of demarcation is that some of the candidates will not have the luxury of perseverance. Even if the mind and body is willing, the high standard of trainability and judgment that is required of commando operators means that some individuals may still be withdrawn. The, the variables are, are so many, you know, that they may be physically up to the challenge, but may not be able to pick up and retain uh, the knowledge required at, in the, in the, at the uh, required amount of time. So there's, uh, there's, there's a lot more to it than just being fit. Uh, you've got to be fit and smart and fit and be able to learn when you're under fatigue. The most important part of the training process is getting through that selection. If you uh, show us the attributes, you show us that you're uh, ready to continue on, then we will give you that shot and we will train you, build you and develop you into a fully effective commando. At different times throughout selection, leadership of the group is assigned between candidates. However, when one man fails, the entire group must endure the failure to emphasise the importance of teamwork. So physically the selection course is tough and gruelling because it enables us to select a top tier candidate. From a, an injury point of view, where we know that they are not going to be injured when they get uh, given a task that's that physically demanding, or from a, um, a decision making point of view, they are able to make decisions under, under that sort of physical demand as well, and the right decision. Selection, it's not about breaking people. It's not about humiliating them. The selection process is about finding a person with suitable attributes to become a commando. 
Unfortunately, we don't have a year to fully develop a person. We've got a short period of time to find out very quickly who's got what it takes. Ray! Oh, listen to the instructions! Lower. Team Commander, carry on with your task. Another set of what seems pointless instructions is issued to the candidates. Their response will be gauged to assess their ability to follow instruction, work as a team and complete the objective, no matter how mundane the task might seem to be. We're not about breaking perfectly good soldiers. On the contrary, it's all about developing them in order to be the best that they can be. The limit that these men can endure is rapidly approaching. But with more than 24 hours remaining on demarcation, their eventual success must now be determined by the strength of their resolve and toughness. What most civvies probably don't realise is the things that you can push your body through and, put, and not just your body, it's your mind. It's your mind that gets stronger from doing all the training and that, so you realise that you don't need to, you know, worry about things and feeling, oh, I, I can't do this anymore. You know, you know you can, so you just keep, you keep doing it. The, uh, the selection course is designed to be uh, the toughest thing they've ever done. We are selecting for the top tier individual, the cream of the crop. There's usually a, uh, a, a signature or a tougher session uh, and it's designed mainly to see uh, if that candidate or, or any candidate really wants to be on the course. Almost every attribute is tested in that session. Uh, it's tough, it lasts for longer than, than a normal physical training session. Uh, that they'd be expected to do on, in, in regular army, and it's, um, it's a lot tougher as well. After days of relentless and gruelling testing, it's inevitable that some of the candidates will not win the battle of resolve. With so little rest, and only minimal rations to sustain them, the bodies of the candidates are screaming for respite, and their mind is begging for the pain to stop. When this is compounded by injury, it simply becomes too much to bear. We feel sorry for the, for the trainee if he's been withdrawn medically. Uh, it's unfortunate that training is, is so demanding that accidents and injuries occur. Get back in line. OK, you have to motivate these guys. All you have to do is finish my bunker. Once you finish my bunker, that's it. We want to see who's, who's got that resolve to keep going, who's got self-doubt. Some people will quit right there, then on the spot, because they don't have the capacity to, to keep going. Making people accountable for their actions produces a better product in the long term. Uh, commando must possess self-discipline. It's a key attribute because often in an operational environment, a uh, commando needs to be able to uh, hold back. You know, we have a lot of situations where uh, our enemy might be using the civilian population perhaps as a shield, and we need commandos to be able to demonstrate the ability to restrain themselves, demonstrate that self-discipline, and only engage the enemy when they have the opportunity to do so and, and are not going to cause any collateral damage. Self-discipline and judgment play a big part during demarcation. It's important that candidates maintain a level disposition in spite of the mounting doubt that accompanies fatigue. I sort of said to myself, if, if other people have already done it and, and people are already in the unit, then what separates them from, from me? It was a constant battle um, not every day, it was pretty much every hour by hour. I think my, um, my feet were strapped, I had blisters everywhere and uh, every, every step of every hour hurt. And uh, it was a constant mental game and constant physical game to, to keep sort of going, to keep, to, to keep going to the next stage or the next part of selection. The tasks set by instructors are undeniably difficult, but they're not impossible. From a physical standpoint, demarcation is survivable. The real difficulty is maintaining perseverance under immense exhaustion and to win the fight against self-doubt. The most important thing fitness-wise for commandos is to be able to perform the uh, physical skill or physical um, requirement and then be able to recover 
um, as quickly as possible and faster than anyone else on the course um, in order to be able to um, be trained in, in a certain skill or certain commando skill. Uh, and that ability is, is going to give that, that candidate more success than everyone else. I don't know what makes you not just get up and go, oh, I've had enough of this, I want to walk away, you know. It's, it, it is your training, it's, it is the way, it's, most people have that anyway, and it's just, I think the training just brings it out and makes it even, even stronger. Like, you know, you're not, you're not there by, you're not there for yourself, you're there for another reason, and you're there with other people, and you can't be selfish in that situation. You must love get ups, don't you, one, one, two? Thank you, one, one, two. The guys that are here are here because they want to be and they're all now probably questioning what their motivation is. And that motivation needs to be well and truly instilled right now or else they'll fail. Incoming! Take cover! A combination of self-discipline and resolve is essential for success, as the only thing holding the candidates back is themselves. I think you have to be 110% committed. You've got to have that sort of internal hunger and that ambition to sort of be the best of the best and to be there at the end. All right, man, listen in. Hey, from here, what I need is four men to move that rope and have it covered off with the rest of the equipment. Are there any questions? Go! Four hydrant, gas cylinder. Have a think about it, man. Let's go. So the, the Australian commander has to be uh, at his at peak fitness before he starts the commander selection course, but I don't think you can qualify the level of fitness um, required for commando selection with any civilian sport. It'd be like playing a game of football for 40 days. Only the candidates that have committed every ounce of their aptitude, strength and ambition are left standing during this late stage of demarcation. There must be more than just aspiration driving them on at this point. A surviving commando selection requires a commitment and a raw instinctual drive that few can maintain. Pain, exhaustion and hunger have plagued these men for almost 48 hours. Their resolve has been stretched to its absolute limit and their capacity for clear judgment has been severely depleted. Without rest, they will not last much longer. Struggling, I'll tell you why, because your two ICs are non-existent. If you're, you're standing here and you're not ready to go, it's because he's not doing his job counting the men. If you're acting as a two IC, you're acting as an NCO in a commando regiment. Do you understand that? Doesn't matter how tired you think you are, if you're running as a two IC, you're running as the platoon sergeant, or whatever it is, a section two IC, a team two IC, sort your shit out. Due to attrition, the candidates are being regrouped and are unaware of what challenges await them next. Boys, we've got an opportunity now to change cams, change socks, whatever we want to do, up to us, right? So you can take that opportunity if you want it. Having seized the opportunity to change their muddied and sodden uniforms, the candidates are ordered back into the rain and filed into position. Tired and wet, they must now remain at attention until instructors delegate the next task. Fatigue is important on selection because it takes the mask away. People come on selection um, all at the same level of confidence, same level of uh, uh, similar personalities, um, and, and definitely the same level of confidence. If they are under a, a, an extreme amount of fatigue, the confidence fades and you see exactly who that person is. The reason they do that is because when you're overseas in operations, you know, you're going days without sleep and you know you might not have much food and you're in a stressful situation and you need to be able to, you know, concentrate and do your job. You know, so other people it's life and death over there. So the harder you train back in Australia, the easier it's gonna be over there and the less mistakes that will be made over there. All right gents, you are at ease to uh, get your gear out, sleep in place, next to your, uh, your bags, your packs, 
on Waikiki when I come back and get The candidates have now completed day two of demarcation and are given a rest. But they are unaware that they're about to start another activity. After just 40 minutes, they're rudely woken. have now entered their final day of demarcation. Over the last 60 hours, they've had less than 60 minutes of sleep. The deprivation has left them in a physically and psychologically fragile state, but there are still more challenges ahead. A scenario not unlike those faced by the Australian commandos on operations. And now they're, they're, they're sorting the white rice from the brown rice. They're absolutely buggered, and they're doing a task that they think is, is pointless. The thing is, is that's what we want them to do, and they need to do it to the best of their ability. They just got to get on with it. They've been told not to get the rice wet, and that's pretty damn difficult. It's not all, you know, action and you know bullets. You know, people play Call of Duty or like, and they load up and they're instantly in the mission. But you know, to get in that situation, there's often days and days of, of boredom and, and where you still have to remain alert because, you know, anything can happen at any time. It can go from being boring to you're in contact, in like, you know, within a second. Commando selection involves such hardship and strain for those attempting it that it is easy to forget that these men are volunteers. These guys are human. You know, they have mortgages and families back home they, they worry about, they have kids, they mourn the loss of a mate, but they will get back up and they will continue to do the job. So um, at the end of the day, they are extraordinary people. You know, they do extraordinary things and are able to rise to great challenges. Right, hurry up, off the truck, let's go. Let's go! Have shoes, runners, and socks ready to put on. Sit down, man, sit down. The medics are going to come around now and assess your feet. Just let the medics do their job. People forget, like, we're a volunteer army. We're not, you know, conscription and that. So everyone who goes overseas, they, they wanted to be, be there. They want to do this. They want to, you know, be in that situation. Especially where, where like, in commandos, like, everyone has to want to be here. Man, what we're going to go with now is a basic fitness assessment. We're going to do this to assess your fitness under fatigue. The first component of the basic fitness assessment is the push-ups. Front rank. On your guts. Surviving the selection course is all about preparation, and it's not just about how many push-ups you can do. It's about being physical in all aspects, being comfortable working within yourself, knowing what your limits are and then it, being prepared to explore and push those limits. It's about being mentally prepared. It's about uh, looking deep inside yourself and realising you've got what it takes and then being prepared to push through any, any barrier that presents itself and to get to the end. That's what it's all about. After days of rigorous physical and psychological testing combined with sleep deprivation, the demarcation process has reached its conclusion. Over the last 72 hours, many candidates have withdrawn from the course. For the few dozen survivors, the arduous 10-month commando reinforcement cycle awaits. Demarcation has finally come to an end, and with it, so too the initial phase of the journey of becoming an Australian commando. After a remorseless two weeks of individual selection, the remaining candidates will now enter a four-week tactical team training course before they are ultimately selected and moved into the commando reinforcement cycle. It is no small achievement. The reinforcement unit will only accept those demonstrating the required commitment and attributes. 
those who have prepared themselves and sacrificed mind and body by demonstrating toughness, exceptional judgment, and unbreakable resolve. You've worked hard for it. You know, it's not just something you stroll into, it's something you have to be dedicated to want to do, and you, know, you, you work hard to get where you are. And, and it doesn't stop with selection. It doesn't get any easier. You're still always trying to do the best you can all the time. And doing that all the time, it gets addictive. You know, it's, it's, that's probably the best part of it. Yeah. At the end of selection, you, we pretty much get a hard, a hardened, resilient, tough candidate to train from the base level. Having endured the physical strain of selection, the commando reinforcement cycle will see the remaining candidates trained in highly specialised close combat skill sets such as these commandos, who are about to carry out a full mission profile. I was very much elated that I, I passed selection, but I guess that was only the, the door opening. Uh, I still was staring down the barrel of nine months of courses and, and every day being constantly assessed every hour. It was good to pass selection, but yeah, that was only the very, the very beginning. If the new trainees survive the 10-month reinforcement cycle, they too will participate in strategically planned and precisely executed scenarios. So once we've selected an individual with the right attributes, then we start to build on that individual's skills. So we will put them through our reinforcement cycle, give them all of the skills that we require them to do when they arrive in the unit. And some of those courses are also particularly tough. Tonight, the culmination of a particularly complex training exercise will take place. After days of planning, the 2nd Commando Regiment will carry out a highly realistic exercise that's been designed to examine their skills in a challenging environment. When you go on a job, you have a plan. There's plans of what's going on, and but you, you don't know what's going to happen on the ground all the time, so in the plan there's a lot of contingency. So if you know, you'll have a certain number of contingencies that might are more likely to happen, so you, you know what's going to happen in that situation. But a lot of the time on the ground, it comes down to you know, the judgment of what's happening and you know, the information that you have available to you. Like that's you know where everyone passing on information that they see things can help build the picture to make to allow the you know, the commander to make the best decision on the ground using his judgment. Airlifted by an arsenal of battlefield-ready Blackhawks. The commando force element are transferred to the backwater docks of a harbour and primed for execution of a highly orchestrated activity. Probably one of the, the most uh, exciting things that, that drove me to, to the commandos is, is the, uh, the training that they get. It's infantry to the core and it's, it's a development on the, the basic skills that you have and utilising them to your best abilities. So you are, you're still a soldier, but you've just got to be the, the best soldier that you can be. So it's, it really comes down to you and, and how good you can be. Each member of the unit has received orders and specific instructions pertaining to their mission. To successfully achieve the objective, teamwork will be paramount. The teamwork is probably the, and professionalism, that's probably the, the two biggest things. Like, you don't want to let your mates down and they don't want to let you down, and you know everyone's there to, to support each other and to help each other out. So, and you're going through the same situation, and you look over your mate and, like, yeah, you, you might see him struggling or he might see you struggling. You know, if one of those, those guys are struggling, that, you know, everyone will be struggling. And you just push through, you like help each other through things. It's teamwork's probably the biggest, biggest thing that gets you through. There are a number of assets being coordinated during these complex assaults. The commandos must work closely together and maintain communications at all times. They've been instructed to investigate a suspicious vessel by the docks, with any members on board to be detained and handed over to the police.
Further orders have been given to infiltrate a passenger terminal to rescue and recover hostages. The commandos await further instructions. Intelligence has indicated that terrorists in the training activity are holding hostages inside. And once they've located the threat, they are under orders to capture them and recover the hostages. Commandos are trained to provide precise and discriminate actions and to only use the minimum necessary level of force to achieve the mission. In a short period, the commandos have disabled the hostile threat. Suffering zero casualties, the commandos capture and immobilize any remaining threat terrorists that have survived the firefight. If the commando candidates can carry out missions as well as this force element, the instructors will be satisfied. As it was on selection, performance of the candidates during the reinforcement cycle is weighted by the demonstration of the commando attributes. Every decision they make is judged accordingly. So their actions before, during, and after combat training activities are critical to their placement within the unit. They are the pointy end of the stick. There's a lot of direct action work. It's, it's not necessarily just patrolling. You are going out there to do specific jobs. And that's what drew me towards it. It's you're going out there for a specific job and you're with the best guys that you've been training with for months and, and years on end to go out, do a job, do it to your best of ability. And it's that kind of challenge that drew me towards it, being the best within the group and getting the jobs done that need to get done. For the candidates, their opportunity to prove their worth as potential commandos in a realistic combat scenario is about to begin. The months of excruciating preparation is yielding results. There's a dangerous world out there. I'd rather be pretty highly skilled and prepared, working in a really good unit that's got all the right gear, than to be a guy that perhaps got a phone call or a conscription in a time of need with um, no training. Having survived the unsympathetic rigour of both screening and selection, this small group have begun the reinforcement training cycle and will continue as candidates. For some of them, they will eventually qualify as a commando. While there will be much hardship to come before they can earn the coveted commando beret, there is already a solid foundation of honour, mateship, respect and trust to support the challenges ahead. There's trust within yourself that you, you're going to do you know, what you say you're going to do, what you can do. You know, it's trust in the guy next to you, it's trust in the training, trust in the, you know, the hierarchy, the decisions they make. It's, it, it is a massive part of this whole, whole job. We take a trainee who's been selected for his attributes and we train him to be a commando. Your heart rate was up, you were sweating, you, you're nervous because you didn't want to make the wrong decision. You know, you, you've been shot, but the world doesn't, doesn't stop, you know, you can't just reload, reboot. 